Hey guys, we're back. This time we're taking a look at Transamerica. And there's been a bunch of different versions of this over the years. And I couldn't even tell you which year version this one is. Uh, it's the Immortal Games Edition on the front here. Uh, Winning Moves Games is also listed on there. And this edition I got specifically because it also includes the Vexation expansion, which is kind of hard to find nowadays. And certain ones have them, certain ones don't. So we'll keep an eye out for that. But it's basically a game where you're building train tracks across America. You're trying to link up different cities along the way. And um, in doing so, you use a set of shared tracks. In the base game, you only had those shared tracks, but in the Vexation expansion, it added color-coded tracks, which only you can use. And then other players basically have to build a path around those. So added a little bit more strategy to the game, I think. And uh, definitely worth uh, looking into. And definitely made it a little bit better, in my opinion. Anyway, let's get right in and check it out. This is actually a game that a friend of mine introduced me to. I'm not huge into train games. I never really got into uh, Ticket to Ride and that. I do have a copy, though. And um, played this a couple times with him, and then actually really enjoyed it. So I uh, decided to pick up a copy, and it was really hard to find a copy, to be honest. Uh, the, the entire rules are literally one piece of paper. And this is, I think these say 2002, um, which is when the original game was released. Somewhere it does. Maybe it's on the back. But it's uh, got a list of all our components here. And then literally that is how to play, that little section there. The back is specifically for the vexation rules, I think. I don't know, they they got their own little section here. So the back is actually plays you through around how to play, how the turn ends, and then how to prepare for the next round. The game's played in a number of rounds. Usually it takes about three or four. It depends. And the vexation instructions there with the colored tracks. You can only ever have three colored tracks at one junction. And people can basically just work their way around those if they have to. Not a whole lot of rules. For our map board, we have a map of the United States. There are different versions of this. There's Trans Europe and things like that that have different maps. I prefer the U.S. one. It's a very basic map of the United States but we have major cities listed all over and they're color-coded you have green red yellow blue and orange and basically orange is the east coast green is the west coast red is the south yellow is central and blue is the north you have these cards and probably the one drawback of this version is it comes with the mini cards where the uh, there are other versions that have full-size cards, which I much prefer. But each of these cards has corresponding colored backs. And then you have your first player token. The different colored backs are going to get shuffled among themselves. So you're going to have a stack of these. You're going to shuffle them up. Everybody's going to get one of each color, which is going to give you a city. And they give you an approximate location of it too. So this is San Francisco, which is right here. And you're going to end up with five of these cards, one of each color. And your goal is going to be to make a route. So we got Denver, El Paso, Jacksonville, and Chicago. So that would be our, our destinations. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to pick a place to start. It can be any junction of these lines anywhere on the map. It doesn't have to be in a city. And you have little pieces. Everybody has these. Like I said, these include the vexation pieces. You're going to put your train up here on the scoring. And you're going to put your cylinder wherever you want to start on the board. I don't know if that's a good place for us to start. We gotta go Chicago, Jacksonville. What do we say? Denver, which is Colorado. And I should probably put these east to west to be easier. Denver, Jacksonville, San Francisco. So we've got San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, Jacksonville. 
What am I missing? El Paso. Of course, we got one way down here. So those are our goals. Ideally, you put yourself in between a couple of them so you can work both ways if you need to. Uh, we're kind of all over the map here. So let's go right in here to start, I think. Maybe more towards the middle. Let's go here. And then we have our three tracks. This is from the Vexation expansion. You might not have those if you don't have the expansion. And there's a whole pile of regular tracks. And on their turn, every player is going to get to lay down two pieces of track. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. I might be able to zoom in. But you can see these normal lines here are one. So you could put one piece there, one piece there, however you want. And then somebody else would take their turn and come back to you. Now, these little ones here, you can see that go over the bridges, over water, or the tunnels through the mountains. You can see how they're double lines. One piece will actually count as two on those. So if you went here, you couldn't put your second one there. It would take two pieces to do those. So you'd have to go again. Well, we wouldn't have done that in the first place. But say we went here up to Denver as our first turn. On our second turn, we could make a bridge out of Denver across the mountains towards San Francisco. That would take both of our placements for that turn. Eventually, you're going to make these nice paths. They're going to lead all over. And the whole map gets filled in. Ideally, you'll have a coast or a trailing train between all the players that'll go coast to coast. Somewhere in the middle of there, you want to stick a one of your colored pieces. And now nobody can use this section here. They would have to take two more pieces on one of their turns and go around. Even better if when you're doing the bridge through or tunnel through the mountains, say you were going to do this one here, you could put that there. And they would have to go around it and well this is a better example here if we went there on that double space with our bridge then someone would have to build around there's a double here a double here a double here they would have to go all the way out and around or all the way up and around if they want to avoid those double tunnels and that's where the colored pieces come in handy you only have three colored pieces the entire game now uh, on your turn though you do place two so you could place one of those and a colored one if you wanted just keep in mind that's all you have for the whole game. Once somebody's completed their route to all five of their cities, they call it out that they're done. That ends the round. And everybody else is going to look at their five cities and decide how many more pieces of track it would take to lay out the rest of the path. So if we were say this is the only part we didn't have, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to get to San Francisco. That's a horrible number to be that high. And uh, at the end, everybody's going to move their train forward. The number that they have. Oops, and that was off screen, so you couldn't see it. But you're going to move forward the number of extra tracks you needed. Usually it's only three or four at most. And then um, that goes for so many turns. I believe it's three turns. It's been a while since I played. But uh, it's three turns, I think, and then you're going to set a basically end-of-the-line marker. And any, the next one, anybody who passes that line triggers the end of the game. And uh, whoever basically is furthest back on that route is going to be the winner. It's not a complicated game. It's pretty simple, and I really like uh, the ease of it. And it looks really cool once you get all the tracks laid out from multiple players. The board fills in quickly. And uh, you don't really get a sense for that until you see a game played. How, how cool the board looks once it's all filled in. Again, I'm not a big train guy. Uh, the guy who introduced me to this game is. And uh, he has tons of different train games. But even, even for me, who's not a train guy, I found this entertaining. Like I said, enough to pick up and add to my collection. As I said, there are multiple versions out there. Some have different uh, maps. Uh, the 
versions of Tran, uh, Transamerica themselves all have the same map, but they have different components. Uh, I think the newest version has plastic tracks instead of the wood. I actually prefer the wood. Uh, they do have larger cards in some versions, which those I do like. And uh, again, the vexation ones with the colored tracks are not in all of them. And they're kind of hard to come by, which is kind of sad because uh, I think they really do add a lot more to the game, being able to block people and force them around. Uh, I don't think I would play without that. Now that, now that I've played with it, uh, there are some people who swear by not having it, though. So uh, You do get blue, green, brown, red, and yellow. There's only five. I thought it said six player. Hmm. Oh, yeah. there's one. And white. There we go. It was stuck in the box. So there's your different colored pieces. Like I said, you got your bag of tracks. You got your deck of cards. And that's everything that comes in it. Overall, like I said, it's a pretty fun game. Pretty easy to learn. I'm hoping that my wife will like this one. I haven't played it with her. She's not into trains either, but I think it's fun and easy to do. And it plays rather quick. You don't even have to play multiple rounds either. You could do one round and be done with it, I think. It's just more fun to play multiple. That said, though, it applies. It appeals to certain people, and the people that you have might not be interested in it. But uh, if they are, it's definitely a fun game. It's one of the more fun train games I've played. I think this on the Underground... And I did finally play a game of Ticket to Ride. I tried to avoid playing Ticket to Ride forever, and I finally got conned into playing it. It wasn't as bad as I expected. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's one of the better ones I've played and uh, definitely would recommend it to anyone interested in the genre. Overall, though, it is a really simple, really fun game that doesn't take a ton to learn and it doesn't take a long time to play, which is a big seller around here. I like long games. My family does not. And uh, hoping to get it to the table more and get refreshed on anything that I may have messed up or forgotten in this. I'm sorry about that. Like I said, it has been a little while since I played. Overall, though, I think it's a great game if you can find it at a reasonable price. I think there is a reprint of it coming soon. I think that's the one that has the plastic tracks. So the price is probably going to go up a little bit on it because of that. But this older version can be difficult to find or sometimes the shipping costs more than the actual thing. And it comes in a pretty small box, which really bothers me when they do that. But if you can find it at a reasonable price, it's great. I wouldn't pay the big premium. I got this copy actually used. And uh, keep that in mind, too. It all depends on how much you're interested in it. But uh, worth the retail price, not worth the, the extra people want sometimes for it. So anyway, that's going to wrap it up for our look at Transamerica. Hope it helps you decide if it's for you. And uh, as always, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.